Shepherd of a soul, Savior of a soul, Lover of a soul. We are on the Lord's side. We will never give up. We Changer, oh God, you are the beginning, you are the end, you are the alpha, you are the omega. Lord, we are children that you love so much that you made us to see another day. Father, Lord, we are at your feet to thank you for what you are doing in our life. We thank you for your age of protection over our life. We thank you because you put us in the hollow of your hands. We thank you because you have made us to be whom you created us to be. We thank you because you do not allow a flash of enemy to prevail over our lives. We thank you for giving us access to come before your presence, to come and learn from you. Father Lord, we are children. We know nothing. As we have come before you, O oh Lord Jesus, Father, in your infinite mercy, Father, Lord, may you teach us in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, Holy Father, even as we have come this hour, oh Lord Jesus, Father, we ask for your mercy in any way that we have behaved foolishly as children, in any way that we have done anything that will make you be angry for us. Father, Lord, we plead for your mercy in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Oh, as we have come this hour, we ask, as little children, we cannot do without your Holy Spirit in our midst. Father Lord, we therefore ask you humbly to please send down your Holy Spirit into our midst. Let him come and take preeminence. Let him come and teach us so that at the end, Lord Jesus, we shall not go empty from your presence in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Oh, uh, and our Father, we are little children. Father, is there any forces of darkness that wants to confuse us, that wants to make us to be distracted when you are giving us instruction, when you are talking to us as children that you love? Father, we come against such powers now in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. My Lord and my Father, Father, Lord, I bring myself before you. I am a little child before you, O Lord Jesus. I know not to speak to my fellow children. Father, King of all glory, I humble myself before you. Father, speak to me and speak through me. That me and my fellow children this hour, Father, Lord, will not go empty in your presence. That at the end, each and every one of us, we shall have every cause to glorify your holy and mighty name. Thank you, Abba Father, for in Thank Jesus you. Christ's holy name. Oh, okay. Amen. 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 Praise Master Jesus Christ. Amen. If you know you are happy to God, you are Father, I want to see you wave your hand unto him. Remember that God is a spirit. If you are waving, he's seeing you. If you are not waving, he sees you. If you are happy to be in his presence, I want you to wave your hand. And as you wave your hand, smile unto him. Smile unto him. You are not in the hospital. And before the grace of Almighty God, thank, thank you. Him is so good. Thank you. Many people ended up in the hospital bed. Many people could not open their eyes. 
Even though they have eyes yesterday, today the eyes cannot open. And people cannot hear again. Today, me and you, we are here before his presence. We are healthy. We have vitality in us. So we need to appreciate him. We say, Father, we thank you. Thank you, Jesus. In Jesus Christ's mighty name, we are giving thanks. Amen. 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 My fellow children, I want to I use the opportunity to thank God Almighty for keeping us, for taking care of us, for taking care of our parents, our daddies, our mommies, our fellow brethren. I want to thank God for his protection leading us to go to school and come back, none of us had any accidents. None of us, we come back, we see our parents, we go to work, they come back. We just want to thank God. And children, this hour, we have come before his presence again to learn from him, to hear the instruction of our father, that one that loved us so, so much. So as we have come before his presence, I want us to relax, feel relaxed. But in your realization, make sure you don't distract, okay? Uh, so that God Almighty will do what he alone will do in your life, in my life. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. And um, as I'm seeing, it's like almost everybody I'm seeing here, all of us were here last week to the glory of Almighty God. We were here last week. And I did remember that before we continue today, uh, to what the Lord has in stock for us today, I will ask because of time, maybe only three people. Um, maybe when you are reading the Bible alone or when you are reading with mommy or daddy, there is always a portion in the Bible. That when you read it as a child, oh, you are so happy. You don't even forget it. That verse is always in your mouth. You love it so much. It makes, a, you know, a, it instructs you. I want to see your hand up. If you have a verse that's always, okay, Manuel, I can see you. Samuel, the top person. All oh, this with your hands are there. You don't read Bible. Okay, Anna, Dublin brethren, who is um, the one at the front? Is that a um, blessing? Yes, sir. Okay. Okay, we'll take four because of time. Now, children, listen carefully. We might learn something from them, even adults. So, um, let's start. Uh, Brother Samuel. Uh, from Stuttgart, Germany, unmute yourself. Yes, sir. God bless you, sir. Uh, before you continue, where is uh, uh, Daniel, the man of God? Hello, Daniel. Okay, it's not yet there. Uh, where is uh, Joshua from Norway? Where is Joshua? S Sister Edith. Tell him I want to see him sit beside you. Joshua, sit beside you, mom, okay? He said, Joshua? Yeah, Joshua, my friend, how are you? No, no, how are you? no, 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 stop, stop, that, okay. no, no. Okay, I'll talk to you later. Okay, God bless you. Um, uh, Elliot, where is, um, where is your brother? Elio Kujo. Where is your brother? Uh, he's behind me. Uh, I want to see all of you. And as many that their camera is off, please, when we come together, I want to see ourselves. So, uh, Samuel, uh, Germany, where is that portion of the Bible that normally, you know, uh, uh, raise your spirit up? Son of God. John 15. John 15, what? Verse 1 to the end. Wow. 
John 15, verse 1 to the end. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Mm. Hallelujah. Mm. John 15. Okay, because it's a long verse. Uh, let's take from verse 1 to 5. Maybe that will give us an insight of the remaining verses. You want to read? I want me to read for you. Okay. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. I am the true vine, and my father is the husband. Man, every branch in me that bear not fruit, he taketh away, and every branch that bringeth fruit, he brought it that it might bring forth more fruit. Mm -hmm. Now we are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Abide in me, and I in you, as the branch cannot bear fruit of itself, mm -hmm. except it abide in the vineyard. Mm -hmm. No more can ye except ye abide in me. Mm -hmm. I am the vine, ye are the branches. Mm. He that abide in me and I in him, the same bringeth forth much fruit. Mm. For without me, ye cannot do nothing. Do nothing. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. <laughs> I am, yeah. I am really, really happy. And I know all of us who are so happy. Because if you ask me, I never expected. Right? That's what I'm saying. We children, you, our mommies and daddy, you'll be learning from what God is telling us. Now, but uh, Samuel, why is this verse always touch you? Because without him, you cannot do anything. Pure idiot. Amen. In mathematics, we said when you know what you are doing in the class, when you write and you are sure of the method you use and so on, you get the answer, you say, cure it. You drop your pen. You are confident. You have nailed the, 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 he hit the nail at the head. Without Jesus Christ, we are nothing. But somebody is telling us that this verse of the Bible always make him strong. Say, Jesus Christ is saying, I am the vine. Vine is like a vine is like a victory. And you are the branches. We are the branches of God. And anyone that decides to say, Oh, I don't want to serve God again. Um, I'm so um, this thing of God is very boring. And you turn your back, you have detached yourself from that very vine. And I know in your back gardens where you live. Sometimes you see uh, leaves fall at the back. Is it not so? And mommy and daddy will tell you to go and gather them. Is it not true? And when we gather, you know, uh, uh, fallen leaves or branches, what do we do? What do we do? Brother Emmanuel from US. What do we do to detach the branches that fell off from the vine? Brother Emmanuel from US. What do you do to them when you gather the branches that fell off from the tree? Yes, Brother Emmanuel, can I hear you? Attach them back. Yeah, when you when you gather the branches that fell from the tree, what do you do to them? Throw them away. You throw them away. Because they are more or less a nuisance. They constitute a nuisance. You throw them away. They are of no help again. The same way it is, like Brother Samuel just told us, Jesus Christ is the vine, we are the branches. Anyone that chooses to break from the branch is thrown away into hell. Are you hearing me? Yes. God bless you all. Anyone that detach 
from the branch from Jesus Christ is thrown away. So that is why Brother Samuel is doing everything humanly possible to make sure that nothing detach him from God. And that is the reason, children, we must do everything humanly possible to get ourselves attached to God. And the only thing that can detach us from God is what is sin. God bless you, Brother Samuel. I have learned a lot from this, and I know other people must have learned from this verse of the Bible. God bless you. More grace, more power in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Then, Sister Blessing from Dublin, and meet yourself. Yes, Sister Blessing, speak on. We can't hear you. John 1.16. John, John 1.16. And of the fullness we have all received and grace for going. John 1.16. And you put that place for us up when? John 1.16, am I right? Yes. Sir. And of his fullness have we received. And grace for grace. God bless you, Father of Most High God. And of His fullness have we received. Now, from the verse that Sister Blessing just uh, um, gave us now, I want somebody from the Dublin branch, what do you understand from that very verse? It's a blessing I have given us that verse. I want somebody else. Brother Michael, what do you understand from that verse? You follow me, okay? Go on. Still on the same time, my time. Jesus died for, he died for us. Yes, say it again. I mean, Jesus died for us and we all say it. Boy, it's great. Jesus died for us and we're all safe. God bless you for that contribution. Okay, Sister Bless you. Uh, let, let me hear you. Jesus then died for grace. Jesus died because of the grace he has for us. God bless you. That almost I got more grace, more strength, more wisdom of God. Sister Blessed said, Of his fullness have we received. We receive the fullness of God in us, grace by grace. Now, there is something that Sister Blessing wants us to understand from this verse. We receive from grace to grace. That is why we need to pray. See, many people who do not understand that we receive the fullness of God in us, they take the grace of God for granted. They will not say, ah, because the fullness of God is in us, we can do anything and get away. That's why we pray that the grace of God upon our life will not be in vain. We will not take it for granted. So as we, as Sister Blessed, made us understand that of his fullness we have received, we have to always make sure that that fullness of God, that is full deity, always dwell in us. And God cannot dwell in a temple that is dirty. So as we know, through Sister Blessing, that while we see the fullness of God in us, we must make sure at all times that nothing contaminated, nothing is polluting, is seen in our body, is seen in our life. Otherwise, that grace, as we watch, that grace we, 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 that we received, we have made it not and void. So as children of God, who are looking unto heaven, make sure that on the last day, we see God in glory. We must be conscious of this, that we have the fullness of God in us. Therefore, there is nothing sinful or contaminating that would allow to come and share the same abode with God in us. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. God bless you. God of God, 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 wisdom. Now we go over to uh, US as Sister Anna. God bless you. 
Amen. Amen. Um, the place that I read is John 17, 17 to 19. John 17? 17 to 19. John 17, 17 to 19. Okay, read it for us. So, sin will testify them through thy truth. Thy word is truth. As thou hast sent me into the world, even so have I also sent them into the world. And for their sakes I sanctify myself, that they also might be sanctified through the truth. Amen. Mm -hmm. God bless you. God bless you. Now, in just a minute, what does this portion of the Bible always tell you each time you know you go through it? Like if you know the true word of God that that you will like like if you know the true word of God that you'll be sanctified. Sent Sanctify. Yes. God bless you, Mr. Anna. Amen. You see, our children have portions of Bible, but most of us are adults. Maybe we don't have any particular portion of the Bible. I would glad someone then look at the children. If you want to tell us the truth, many adults, there's no particular portion of the Bible. At all times, something will go your mind will go there. So look at the children. Sister Anna is telling us. It says, sanctify them through thy truth. Even the children know that sanctification can only come from the true word of God. Children know that sanctification, cleansing, purification can only come from the true word of God. I'm daughter of God. Because I know it's the Holy Spirit that is teaching all of you these things. It's not about teacher. And because you have realized that the word of God is the truth. And that is where true sanctification can come. The true word of God in your life. No power of the enemy can ever contaminate it in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And that's oh. all of us have come today uh, to we hear the word of God and the words we hear already. God will continually purge us, sanctify us, that on the last day, on the last day, no children in this mountain will be found wanting in the kingdom of God, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Then lastly, before we go, Emmanuel. Okay. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Can you hear him? A verse is Psalm 119, verse 119. Verse 10, with my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. 11, thy word have I hidden in my heart, that I may not sin against God, against thee. 12, are thou, O oh Lord, me thy status. 13, with my lips have I declared all the judgment of thy mouth. 14. I have I, I have rejoiced in the way of testimonies as much as in all riches. Okay. okay. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Uh, Brother Emmanuel made us to understand. He said the verse that always rings back in his head. Is Psalm 119 from verse 10 down. And as he read, he said, With my whole heart have I sought thee. Oh, let me not wander from thy commandments. 11. Thy word have I hid in my heart 
that I might not sin against thee. Blessed are thou, O Lord, teach me thy status. Now, Emmanuel, now that you have told us about this verse, what do you understand from it? He cannot hear you. But you can hear me. Yes. Okay. Uh, move a little bit closer. We can hear. Okay, go on. I hear you now. Can you hear me? No. Yes. yes. I can hear you. First tells is a reminder that uh, is a reminder to tell me what to do from day to day life, and this thing gives me it's like a like a leaf that tells me what to do at a certain time. Like when somebody tells me to do something that's wrong, for some. Psalms verse 119 verse 11 will tell me the word of God have I hidden in my heart that yeah, I will not sin against God. So that tells me that I'm not meant to sin against him because of the word of God have told me that. That's what he has told me. Amen. 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 Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Is standing up today. He said, this portion of the uh, Bible is like uh, a leaflet in his hands. But uh, from day to day, uh, even when somebody wants to make him to sin against God, uh, this portion will remind him that the word of God have I hidden in my heart that I have not sinned against you. And I pray so. Uh, the word of God, uh, God by his infinite mercy, have hidden in your heart. No power can ever steal it out of your uh, heart. And the commandment of Almighty God we always ring bell in your heart in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Children, was had it? My mother said, a word of God. Your word have I hidden in my heart. Even as adults, no matter how old we are, if we can always have this at the back of our mind, as God, because temptation will come every day. Challenges will come. But if we hid the word of God in our hearts, what of God will remind us what you are about to do, what you are about to say. Do you remember the son of whom you are? What you are about to do is it to the, whose glory? Is it to the glory of Satan or my glory? The word of God is a compass. So I want to, I want God Almighty, His infinite mercy, to continually take all glory in the life of all our children in this mountain. And as many that still have their own uh, Bible verses that they want to uh, uh, bless us with, maybe by next week or next time, I'll still call all of us. And I pray, uh, God Almighty, that divine knowledge, wisdom, and understanding that He bestowed on children like Samuel, Daniel, Michelle, Shadrach, Abednego, many of them in the Bible, that made them to stand out amongst their equal. That knowledge, that wisdom, God will bestow it upon you all. In Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. So children, um, you see, uh, to the glory of Almighty God, we are not doing badly, and I thank God for your lives. Now today, as we are about to look into the word of God, as time may permit us, I want us to pay attention. Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, the saint of days, Father, we give you glory, we give you honor. Thank you for your presence in our midst. Because we can feel you, Holy Spirit. You have started with us. You will end with us. Come and take absolute control. Even as we're about to hear more of your ways, oh Lord Jesus. May you continually, Father Lord, stay that hunger, that test of your word in our life, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. And as your word will be coming to us, as a seed, Father Lord, let us hide your word in our hearts that will not sin against you, that will not rebel against you, that at the end, Father Lord, our life shall be pleasing to you in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. So children, today we are going to look at a topic uh, that is captioned Adam and Eve hid from God. Adam and Eve hid from God. 
How many of us know the story of Adam and Eve? Good. Good. Okay. Sister uh, Kemi, Abrakemi, who is Adam and who is Eve? Commit yourself. Yes. Eve is yeah, go on. Wife. Eve is um, the wife and Adam is the husband. Yeah, and who are they? Uh, the first people on the earth. Okay. God bless you. Say with confidence. Okay. Lord. Yeah, the four people that God created. Mm -hmm. Adam and Eve. Adam being the husband and Eve, the wife. God bless you for that. And children, today we are going to look at their life and see what it can teach me and you. We are going to take a portion of a reading. Fortunately, unfortunately, it might be a little bit you know, lengthy, but I'm going to be uh, faster because of time. So let's open our Bible to the book of Genesis. Flip your Bible quickly to the book of Genesis. Let's start from chapter 3. We are going to uh, read it from verse 1 to 13. Genesis chapter number 3, from verse 1 to 13. Now I read. I read. Now, follow me as I'm reading. Let your eye be on your own uh, the Bible. Okay? Now, the subject was more subtle than any beast of the field which the Lord God had made. And he said unto the woman, that is, the woman now is Eve. He said to the woman, Yea, and God said, Ye shall not eat of every tree of the garden. Verse 2. And the woman said unto the serpent, We may eat of the fruit of the trees of the garden, but of the fruit of the tree which is in the midst of the garden, God have said, Ye shall not eat of it, neither shall you touch it, lest you die. Instruction. Verse 4. And the serpent said unto the woman, Ye shall not surely die. Children, carefully follow it. Evil counseling. Ye shall not die. Five. For God knows that in the day you eat thereof, then your eyes shall be opened, and ye shall be as God, knowing good and evil. See, lying that looks like good. Six. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food, and that it was pleasant to the eyes, and a tree to be desired to make one wise, because Satan had told her so. She took of the tree. So, sorry, she took of the fruit, the arrow, and did it, and gave also unto her husband with her, and he did it. Verse 7. And the eyes of them both opened, and they knew that they were naked, and they sewed fig leaves together and made themselves aprons. Verse 8. And they had the voice of the Lord. They had the voice of Lord God walking in the garden in the cool of the day. And Adam and his wife he hid themselves from the presence of God among the trees of the garden. Hmm. And the Lord called unto Adam and said unto him, Where art thou? Ten. And he said, I hide thy voice in the garden. And I was afraid because I was naked and I hid myself. 11. And he said, Who told thee that thou was naked? Has thou eaten of the tree whereof I commanded thee that thou shouldn't not eat? Verse 12. And the man said, The woman whom thou givest to me, the woman who thou givest to be with me, she gave me of the tree, and I did eat. Thirteen, because of time, children, 
And the Lord God said unto the woman, What is this that thou hast done? And the woman said, The serpent beguiled me, and I did eat. Hmm. Children of God, this is a lesson that if we begin to teach it, for one good month, we might not be able to finish. There are much to be learned from this verse of the Bible that we just read. Now, from the little portion that we have just read now, children, we can see that of a truth, of a truth, God so much loved man that he created. God so much loved man that he created. The love of God for, for us, even till now that you are looking at me, I'm looking at you, is from time, from time immemorial. That's why the God we are serving is the God of yesterday, today, and forever. So the love that God has for Adam and Eve is an unrestricted love that gave them access, according to where we read, to eat and enjoy freely whatever they wish. He gave them free access. That is to show you the, the kind of love that God has for each and every one of us. But something went wrong. Now, before I continue, who can tell me a portion in the Bible, in the New Testament, that made us to know the extent of love that God has for me and you? It is a portion that all of you say uh, always. Okay, I know you know. God bless you. Remember, but let me hear from other people. Um, okay. Is that Daniel? Daniel, meet yourself. Yes, sir. Okay, what is that? Where, where, where is that person? John 3 16. And what did he say? For God so loved the world that he sent his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish but have everlasting life. Amen. God bless you, son. You see, the same love that God extended to Adam and Eve, that same love is still today. But something went wrong. The people that God gave a blanket check, do eat whatever. Just eat. Enjoy. Have a free access. Be in control. You can imagine. But only one instruction. Only one instruction. By the tree of the garden. Now, let somebody open to, to that some uh, um, Genesis we're reading. Just flip it just back to, to chapter 2. Flip your Bible to chapter 2. If you are there, praise Master Jesus Christ. Now, if you are there, read 15 to 17 for us. I read in Jesus' name. I read in Jesus' name. Read in Jesus name. Uh, okay, let's, let's go one by one. Everybody will read. We have enough today. Praise Master yeah, Jesus okay. Christ. Uh, 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 I, know, I want somebody who have not read today. Ah. Okay. Um, okay, do them. Okay, quickly. And the, and the Lord's, Lord God commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of the garden, thou mayest freely. Where, where are you reading? Um, Genesis. Genesis chapter 2, from verse 15. Oh, 15 to 17, okay. And the Lord God took the man and put him into a garden of Eden to dress it and to keep it. 16. And the Lord commanded the man, saying, Of every tree of this garden thou mayest freely eat. 17. But of the tree of the knowledge of the good and evil, thou shalt not eat of it, for in the in the day and day it is therefore they shall surely die hmm. god bless you so of most i got more, more grace more knowledge <clears throat> eat everything do everything you want to do dress it keep it you are in charge it belongs to you but be free of good and evil only one only one do not touch for your own good for own good. But when they disobeyed and sinned against God, 
by listening to the evil counsel. Children, one of the essence of we, of, uh, daddy and mommy bringing us together is for us to always take instruction from God so that we will not go outside there and take evil counsel. Children, the serpent that the Bible is telling me and you can come in form of your friend. Say, thank you, in 2001. You come and tell you. Smoking is not bad. It's just to take it to relax. Drinking alcohol doesn't make anything. It makes you high. You're a guy. Are you hearing me? Satan can enter into somebody to begin to teach you sinful lifestyles. So that is why we need to be careful. Satan can enter into somebody you call their friend to teach you how to begin to tell lies. They listen, Eve listened to the evil counsel of serpents. And look at how dangerous sin can be in the life of anyone. The people that God loved so much, he did not bring them to the garden. Say, look at this portion. Just take this one. Leave this one for me. He said, bless it. Look after it. Take control. Unrestricted. But when disobedience and sin came, he did what? He brought separation. People that were communicating with God, God will come in the morning, in the afternoon, even before God will call them, they are there. Now, because they sinned, because they have disobeyed God, when they now hear that voice that they always hunger to hear always, the Bible says, instead of them coming to meet him, they go into what? Into hiding. So one of the most dangerous things that sin can do in the life of anyone, it will do what? It will bring a separation. Hmm. It will make us to hide away instead of embracing God. Because you can't have the conscience to face him. You can't even have the mouth to call unto him, say, Father, come and help me. Father, come and thank you. No, because you know you have disobeyed. You live what? You live in disobedience. You live in sin. Adam and Eve, before this time, have a very cordial relationship with God. They have common interaction with God. But the very day that sin entered, it brought what? a very big wall of separation. If daddy or mommy is coming back from work and you had them when they packed their car, instead of you coming to open the door for them, maybe they had their own key. They opened the door and entered. Oh, where is the manual? And he go hiding under the bed. Something must have gone wrong. Children, are you hearing me? Some Something will tell the mom or the dad immediently. Something must have gone wrong. The same way it is between we and God. The voice of God is, is supposed to give us boldness, joy, confidence. But when we, when we hear, when they tell us, come, let's go and read the word of God. Come, let's go. And you feel bored. You don't, something is wrong somewhere. Satan is at work. Satan is what the only one thing that is waiting to take for your life. That's so. And when he takes it to hell. So Adam and Eve, they disobeyed God. Instead of embracing God, they went into hiding. They went into hiding. So according to where we just read, beloved, Adam and Eve, the wife. They try to hear from God because they have sinned. But my question is this to us children. Who can hide from God? Is there anyone that can hide from God? I want a rest. No. 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 Nobody. Please, let's try to bring people in attendee. We can never hide from God. It is not possible. 
it is quite impossible. You cannot hide from God even though you are in secret doing that sin. You think that mommy or daddy cannot see. Yes, we are human beings like you. We may not see, but God sees it all. Are you hearing? So children, don't allow the spirit of I am clever than mommy and daddy to come into you. That is satanic. Children, am I communicating at all? Are you hearing me? Uh, yes, yes, sir. sir. Yes, yes. Don't allow it at all. Mommy or daddy may not see. Ah, but there is somebody that sees both in the open and in the secret. They say, you can run, no? But you can't hide from God. So Adam and Eve try to see if they can hide. But look at now. Can somebody uh, open the book of Jeremiah? Jeremiah 23, 24. And another person can go to Hebrew. Hebrew chapter 4, verse 13. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Who are those people reading with me? Okay, uh, Sister Blessing, have you, where did you get? Hebrew 4.13. Hebrew 4.13, you are so fast today, oh yeah, read. And there is no creature hidden from his sight, but all things are naked and open to the eyes of him. How? Oh. Blessing, I've just said it as it is. He said, Neither is there any creature. You know, when he said neither or, which means it can, it's possible this one can hide. But when the Englishman said neither, no, which means in totality, neither is there any creature that is not manifest in his sight. But all things are naked and open unto the eyes of him. With whom we have to do. So everything is naked before the eyes of God, children. Anyone that does good on that last day, that mommy or daddy will not stand with you before God on the judgment seat. The Bible says everything is naked before Him. Every of our fire will be brought like this before Him. The good that we did before Him. You'll be marking, my son, my daughter, you're welcome. The bad, if you do bad, the same way. So there is no creature. But today, many people, that's why we say we should be very careful not to take evil counsel. Children, if we have the word of God richly in us, even though, even if it's a teacher telling something, they want to tell you, well, I may not disobey her, let us what I said, but this one, Inside me, the word of God is telling me this cannot be God. I will not follow to do this one. I will not do this one. I will not follow them. Because you have the word of God in you. But if you follow them and do, after all, mommy did not see me. Apostle cannot be in Germany and see me. God sees more than apostle. God sees more than your mommy. God sees more than your daddy. So the Bible that Sister Blessed us for us, it said, Neither, no creature at all can hid anything from God. Praise Master Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Now, uh, that Jeremiah 23, verse 24. Who is there? Um, uh, the brother Enoch, where are you? Brother Enoch. Okay, read uh, uh, Jeremiah 23, verse 24. Yeah, let me just get there first. Yeah. What do you say? Jeremiah, what? Jeremiah 23, verse 24. God bless you. Are you there? Uh, no. Are you really following me? What? Are you really following the okay. Jeremiah 23, verse 24. Please. 
that sin does in the life of anyone, even though we are so special to God. One of the things that we must learn today that sin cut off with a very sharp knife. Sin does what it cut off. That father and son or father and daughter cordial relationship that we used to have with God. Disobedience cut off that relationship that we have with God that made him to say that we are his heritage, that we are his special possession. So when we sin, you see the way God gave Adam and Eve, the whole earth, he said, enjoy. But when they sin, he brings separation. He brings what? A separation. Yes. God so much, so much love us. One of us have told us in the book of John 3, 16, of God's son of the world. He gave his only begotten son. If we believe, if we live in accordance with his commandments, everything that he promised us, what he said he will do for us, he will never fail because God never fell. But anytime sin comes in, it scatters everything. He takes us away. For the presence of God, it brings what a demarcation. Now, can somebody quickly go to Isaiah 59? Isaiah 59, verse 1 to 2. Isaiah 59, 1 to 2. Brother Samuel. Brother Samuel, open Isaiah, uh, Samuel Germany. Open Isaiah 59, 1 to 2. Amen. Are you there? Isaiah 59, 1 to 2. We will see that God can never fail. God can never change. But there is something if we do automatically, it will change everything. Uh, yes, sir. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. Behold, the Lord's hands is not short. Mm -hmm. That it cannot save, neither his ear heavy, that it cannot hear. Mm. Two, but your iniquities have separated between you and God, and your God, mm -hmm. and your sin have hid his face from you, mm. that ye will not hear. Mm. God bless you, son of Most High God. More wisdom, more knowledge in Jesus' name. See, we have so many. The heart of God and never and cannot be shortened. That He cannot save. No matter any part of the world you are, the hand of God reaches there. No matter the end of the earth, where you find yourself, where you are connected from, the eyes of God is there. But when sin comes, the Bible said, the sin will do what? It will separate. You are iniquity. You are sin. I've separated you from God. You now look as if God cannot hear. God cannot hear prayer. God cannot. No. So, children of God, it is a deadly thing that sin does in the life of anyone. It brings what a complete separation from we and God. It's mere that relationship that we have with God. Smells it. So sin makes God to take away his eyes of love. Sin makes what God to take away his eyes of love and care from a sinner because he is what a holy God. God is a holy God. His eyes cannot behold iniquity. There is much to read in the book of Habakkuk. Habakkuk chapter 1 verse 13. Our God, the God we serve. Children, listen to me. God is a holy God. His eyes are never and cannot behold iniquity. It is not possible. So that is why if we want to maintain a cordial relationship with God, we must run away from anything sinful. If there is no sin in us, there is no way Satan can do anything to us. There is no way we call God and he will not answer. 
God is a holy God. That's why the Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 1, verse 13, he said, Thou art of a purer eyes than to behold evil. God cannot behold evil. So that was why what Adam and Eve did made him. If you read that place down, that is where the suffering that was suffering in this world started. When they did that, God did not tell them. That is when different kinds of things begin to happen. Death entered. People begin to die. This is everything. Suffering. But before that time, nothing like that. So God, according to the Bible, his eyes are pure enough to behold evil and cannot look on iniquity. God cannot look on iniquity. So children, if we want the eyes of God to always be in us, even when your daddy or your mom is not, even when your daddy or mom is there, there is a limit to which they can do for you. But if the eyes of the Lord is upon you, if his mighty hand is upon you, you will go out in safety. You will come back in safety. If the eyes of the Lord is upon you, what people are finding difficult to achieve in life that is positive, when you put your hand there, everything will go accordingly. When the eyes of and the love of God is upon you, before you call unto God, He is there for you. So, children, today, woman of finish it up, nothing good comes from the devil. If you want to know, know the the uh, 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 the title of Satan. If you go to the book of John chapter 4, verse 44, John 8, 44, you will see how the Bible describes Satan. He said he is what the father of all lies. Nothing good ever comes from him. So if we don't want God to take his eyes of love from us, if we don't want God to turn his back on us, if we don't want anything to bring separation from we and God, as Adam and Eve separated themselves, not because of what they listened to what? To serpent, uh, we should always run away from anything sinful. No, uh, uh, time is uh, uh, fast. Uh, uh, Brasamia, instance, Brasamia, go to First John chapter one verse nine. This will be the last verse I will take because of time. Okay. So we should run. Go to uh, First John one nine. We should run away from everything sinful. We should do what humanly possible that nothing separates us from the love of God. Adam and Eve, they missed what God, because if they have not seen me and you, we can't know anything that is called suffering. No. Yeah, I'm telling my, my, my beloved. So, Satan, that book of John 8 44 is where you can see the qualification of Satan. Nothing good comes from him. So, children, before Brother Samuel will read, anytime we find ourselves that we have done anything wrong, we don't go to cover it up. Are you hearing me now? Yes. Don't go and hide like Adam and Eve. God will find you out. Do you know what you will do when you find yourself that you have done something wrong? When you know you have done something wrong, either to your friend, your brother, your sister, your mommy, your dad, or to anyone, and your, you, your mind tells you, oh, I have done something wrong. What do you do? Now, Brasame will tell us what we do in first, in, in John, first John 1 9. Brasame, okay. I read in Jesus' name. Amen. If ye confess our sin, mm -hmm. ye is fine for faithful and just for forgive us our sin mm -hmm. to cleanse us from all our iniquities. Uh -huh. God bless you, Samuel. So we cannot hide. We cannot cover up. It is deadly. Anyone that cover until that day, God comes to meet you straight to hell. You cannot enter the kingdom of God. So what you need to do, anytime you find yourself, you have done anything wrong, don't let anyone remind you. Go and do what Brother Samuel just tell you. He said, if we confess our sins, the God we are serving. The Bible says, He is faithful and just to forgive us our sins and to cleanse us from every unrighteousness and to embrace us again. I think we have treated the story of uh, our prodigal son here. We go to our father like a prodigal son. Father, I have sinned against you. I am sorry. Because if a prodigal son has covered up, continue to hide away, he will die there. But he made up his mind and come to the father, and the father opened up his arm. And do what? He embraced him. And he never sinned again. So children, today, we have learned 
that sin can make us be separated from God. Sin can make us hide from God. Sin can make God to turn away his eyes of love and mercy from us. But if we run to his feet to confess and to forsake, he is there to embrace us to his fold. And may God Almighty, his infinite mercy, make this word that he has given to me and you for us to live with it so that it can bear fruit in our life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Um, you know, I want you to unmute your mic now. My mommy will not pray for you. And they will not pray. Okay. Use your mouth and say, God, any sin in my life that will help me to separate from you, make you to hide your, your face of mercy and love from me. Father, deliver me from that sin in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your mouth. Jesus Christ, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. Amen. Once again, I want us to cry out. Let us ask God. That when I come and see sin, you see, sin is very dangerous. Sin exposes them, their nakedness. You know that it is the love of God that covers me and you. That the enemy will not see our nakedness. We're going to ask God. Say, Father, any sin that will expose my nakedness to the enemy, Father Lord, deliver me from that very sin in the mighty name of Jesus. Jesus, in the name of Jesus, in Jesus, Christ, in the name of Jesus, 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 of Jesus, in the name of Psalm 91, from verse 1. Say, he that does what? He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High God shall abide in the shadow of Almighty. Sin will make us not to dwell in that secret place. Sin will make us to run away from our place of protection. Mm. God ask God. Say, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus Christ, Father, today and forever, Father, hide me under your secret place. Any sin that wants to expose me to enemy. Any sin I want to expose me to Satan, Father, deliver me from that sin. I want to dwell in your secret place all the days of my life in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Open your wow. heart. Wow. 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 In Jesus Christ, mighty name, we are praying. Amen. 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 So I pray this hour, so shall it be in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Amen. Brethren, are you out there? You are not giving your life to Jesus Christ. You know the reason? Satan is hiding you. Satan is trying to make you to feel as if you are clever. Satan wants to hide you until he will hide you into hell. He doesn't want you to embrace your creator. That same thing that he put in your heart, say it doesn't matter. It's okay. He's hiding you because he wants to steal your, your soul to hell. So if you are there, you want Satan to 
you lose hold of your soul so that you go and embrace God instead of running away from Him. So repeat the short prayer of confession and mercy after me. Say, Lord Jesus, Jesus. have you had your word today? Okay. In every way in my life that sin has made me to hide away from you. That sin has separated me from your love and mercy. Lord Jesus, Not me. today I surrender unto you. I ask you, O oh Lord my Father, have mercy upon my poor soul. Deliver me, O oh Lord my Father. Come into my life and be my Lord and personal Savior. Every sin that has put my name in the book of the dead, let your mercy today remove my name on the book of death and write my name in the book of life. Lord, as I've had your word, that is only sin that can make me to hide from you and can separate me from you. Lord, I don't want to hide from you. I want to have a constant communication and relationship with you. Give me the grace to overcome every form of sin that all the days of my life I will do the journey of my life with you. I will no longer hide from you. You will no longer hide your face from me. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul today in Jesus Christ's mighty name. Amen. Heavenly Father, we thank you. We give you all the glory. We give you all the honor. We give all the adoration. Thank you for your word that has come to us. This is why I want Lord Jesus. Father Lord, your word is a seed. As you are planted it in our life, let your word germinate and bear fruit. A fruit, my Lord, my Father, Lord Jesus, that you will purge and will bear more fruit on the last day. Each and every one of us, Lord Jesus, Father Lord, will be with you in your kingdom in the mighty name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, ancient of days. Thank you, Mother Holy Ghost. For in Jesus Christ's holy name, we are all praying with thanksgiving. Amen. Amen. Master Jesus Christ. Amen. If you are happy and we understood what God has taught us today, let's put our hands together to Almighty God. Amen. God bless you all children. Shepherd of a soul, shepherd of a soul.